This is the second video in a two-part series on stacks and queues. This video covers how to traverse and add items to and remove items from the stack and queue data structures. We introduced the stack and queue data structure in the previous video. If you've not yet seen it, go back and watch part one first. So we've already covered various ways we can create or implement a stack or queue. In addition, you need to be able to trace and write code that can traverse a stack or queue, add an item and remove an item. You can achieve this by either using an array and procedural programming or an object oriented approach. The exam board recommends you gain a general understanding of these methods backed up by practical experience implementing them as opposed to trying to memorize any particular code pattern. We'll start by looking at how to add an item to a stack and then a queue. So here we have a stack. Let's add Justin to this stack. Remember, adding an item to a stack is performed with a push operation. We push the new item onto the top of the stack. First, we check if the stack is already full. It's important that you check a data structure is not full before you attempt to add an item. If it is, you should stop and report an error. Students often forget this step and lose an easy mark in the process. We can see there's space available in the stack. We're using an array to implement the stack, which is a static data structure, so it has a limited number of spaces to store items. Next, we need to increment the stack pointer so it points to the next available space in the array. Finally, we insert the new item, Justin, into the array at the position pointed to by the stack pointer. But I thought the stack pointer was supposed to point to the next available space, not the top item in the list. This is something we often hear people say. It's not that one way is right and the other way is wrong. It simply comes down to how you choose to implement the data structure. If you choose to implement it this way, your algorithm for pushing a new item onto the stack would simply swap steps two and three as shown here. Of course, you could choose to implement a stack using objects instead of an array. This way, we get around the restrictions of a static array. Using an object oriented approach, a stack can grow and shrink dynamically to almost any size, assuming we have enough memory. The algorithm doesn't change very much either, as you can see here. Let's add Justin this time to a queue data structure. Remember, adding an item to a queue is performed with an n queue operation. We add the new item at the back of the queue. So out of a stack, we should begin by checking that the queue is not already full. If it is, we should stop and report an error as the first step. We now have to increment the back or tail pointer so it points to the next available space in the array. Remember it's the back or tail pointer we have to move at this stage as new items are always enqueued at the back of the queue. Finally, we insert the new data item Justin into the location pointed to by the back or tail pointer. Just like with a stack, we could choose to implement a queue so that the back or tail pointer is pointing to the next available space. In this case, you'd enqueue the new item at the position pointed to by the back or tail pointer and then increment the pointer. And once again, we could also choose to implement the queue using an object oriented approach. Using an object oriented approach, the queue can grow and shrink dynamically to almost any size, assuming we have free memory. And once again, the algorithm only changes very slightly as shown here. So now let's try removing an item from a stack or a queue. So let's start by removing an item from the top of this stack. Remember, a moving an item from a stack is performed with a pop operation. We pop the last item added from the top of the stack. First, we check if the stack is empty. It's important you check a data structure is not empty before you attempt to remove an item. If it is, you should stop and report an error. Again, students often forget this step and lose an easy mark in the process. We can see the stack is not empty, so we can move on to the next step. 
Next, we copy the item pointed to by the pointer out of the stack. Where we store the item is totally up to us. It would make sense to store it in another variable or data structure for further use in our program. Finally, we decrement the pointer so it points to the new top of the stack. Note how the actual item SAM still exists in the array at position 2. Data is never really deleted from a computer, it's only ever overwritten. However, as far as the stack is concerned, SAM has been removed as the top of the stack is now pointing at Andy. If we choose to implement the stack as an object oriented technique, the algorithm changes slightly, but overall, the steps are the same. Let's remove an item now from the front of the queue. Remember, removing an item from a queue is performed using a dequeue operation. We dequeue the item at the front of the queue. As with a stack, we should first check that the queue is not empty. If it is, we should stop and report an error. We copy the item pointed to by the front or head pointer out of the queue. Where we store this item is, again, totally up to us. It would make sense to store it in another variable for future use. Finally, we increment the front or head pointer so it points back to the front of the queue. Note how the item previously at the front of the queue, Craig, still exists in the array at position 0. Remember, data was never really deleted from a computer, only overwritten. However, as far as the queue is concerned, Craig has been removed as the front of the queue is now pointing to Andy. If we choose to implement a queue using an object oriented technique, the algorithm again changes slightly, but overall the steps are basically the same. Finally, let's look at how to traverse through a stack and then a queue, outputting the contents as we go. A classic implementation of a stack or a queue only supports three operations, push, enqueue, pop, dequeue, and peak. There are no operations that will expose elements in the middle. We could either use peak to look at the top or front item to see what it is without altering it, or we could repeatedly pop or dequeue items following the same process we showed before to output the contents. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do stacks and queues work? How do you create stacks and queues? How do you add items to stacks and queues? How do you remove a data item from stacks and queues? And how do you traverse stacks and queues? That's everything you need to know for the exam. But if you have a second, we've got one more thing to talk about. So earlier we mentioned you can't iterate through a stack or a queue to look through its contents because a stack and a queue only allow you to push NQ, pop DQ or peak. That said, there's nothing actually stopping you from implementing the ability to iterate through these data structures and look at their contents. However, strictly speaking, could the data structure still be considered now a stack or a queue? Well, the answer is yes. An abstract data structure is only defined by what operations it must support. There is no rule preventing it having additional operations that you program. Dave and I know that data structures and algorithms are one of the hardest areas of the course, and we've therefore written a dedicated book, which is available to purchase on Amazon. The book covers all the data structures and algorithms you need to be aware of for the exam. Each one has its own dedicated chapter. The chapter overviews the data structure or algorithm, gives you applications, operations, links to our videos online, and goes over the algorithm in simple structured English, a visualization, pseudocode, and is fully coded in Python, C Sharp, and Visual Basic. Thank you.